Hey there and welcome to a Curtis Stage video tutorial. Today's tutorial is in Photoshop and we're going to talk about doing a cubist style uh, project in Photoshop and so let's get started. So I'm going to open up Photoshop and you're going to see that you've got the ability, this window will come up and it'll show you kind of recent files that you've may have opened. We're going to go to create new. We're going to start this project with a blank white canvas or artboard. So I'm going to click create new. It's going to ask me what size that I want to do it in. So for our projects for Multimedia 100 at Los Angeles Mission College, we're going to pick inches on the right hand side. And I'm going to pick a width of 10 and a height of 8. Or I could flip it. I could do a width of eight and a height by 10. So in other words, this needs to be an eight by 10 or 10 by eight image. I'm gonna go width of 10 because I want this to be more of a horizontal image. And I'm gonna keep my resolution at 200. Uh, that's a fine size for, pr if I was printing this, that'd be okay to print between 200 and 300. And all these other settings, I'm gonna leave the way they are. I'm gonna click okay. You don't need to title this right now yet. I'm gonna click uh, create down here at the bottom. When I do, it's gonna open up my artboard or canvas and you may see yours look a little different than mine you may not have uh, it's a artboard here it's not a big deal if you do so what we're going to do is we're going to start with bringing images into this photoshop document so think of this as like a blank canvas like you're going to get ready to make a painting or something like that so for cubism remember a lot of cubism is not about cubes. We, in my lecture, I talked about that cubism is really about kind of multiple viewpoints, multiple vantage points over time. Uh, we want to think about cubism more like that. We don't want to think about cubism as we're creating a bunch of cubed collage things. So I'm going to use Dodger Stadium as the example. So we're going to take a break from Photoshop for a second, and we're going to open up our web browser. So I have Google Chrome open. I did an uh, image search for Dodger Stadium. Now, it's going to be important for us to get the right size image. So uh, I'm going to do this. Actually, I'm going to go back here and look again. I'm going to go to Photoshop, Image, Image Size. I'm going to look in pixels what size our image is. So if I switch this to inches, it's going to show me the 8 by 10 or 10 by 8. But if I switch right here to pixels, it's going to show me that my size is 2,000 wide by 1,600. Great. So when I'm doing my Google image search, let me bring that back here. When I'm doing my Google image search, I want to get an image that's about that. So when you hover your mouse over, you can see the different sizes right down here in the right corner in Chrome. Uh, so here we go. This one's good size. This would fit my screen. Now what I'm going to look for first is a base image. One that's going to come in and kind of be the background. Then we're going to bring in other Dodger Stadium pieces or chunks, you know, as part of this. I, I refrain from saying cubes. We're going to bring in other parts. So I want to find a base image first. So something like this would be good where I get a good view of Dodger Stadium or maybe like this one. I can also go up to tools and go to size and pick large as my images so that that all my pictures that are going to be in here are going to be fairly large. So here's one at night. This one's pretty good. It's 2,000, almost 3,000 pixels. Here's one during the day. So this is pretty good. This is not the image that I want to bring into Photoshop. This is a thumbnail, right? These are, these are this, this whole page is thumbnails. What that means is these are visual representations of a bigger image. So each one of these is Google serving this up so that you can see these images quickly. And then you have to click on the image to get the bigger one. This isn't even the bigger one here. When you click view image, or if you don't see view image here, if you hold down control on your keyboard, both Mac or PC, you can say open image in a new tab. So you can do this. And then you'll see a new tab open up, and there's your image right there. So that's the large image. The other one was a thumbnail. This is the image we want to bring into Photoshop. Now there's two ways to do it. I can bring this over here so I can kind of see my browser off to the side and I can have Photoshop over here. And I can simply drag right into Photoshop and drop. Now if that doesn't work for you, you can save this onto your desktop or in your documents folder and then bring it into the Photoshop icon. So 
But if you bring it to the Photoshop icon, remember it's going to open up that image in Photoshop. It will be its image size and you have to bring it into the 8 by 10. So let me show you how that would work. So if I brought this over to the desktop, this is the other way to do it if it wasn't dragging in from your browser directly into Photoshop. So here it is on my desktop and I'm going to minimize this for right now. So on my desktop, if I take this and drag it down to the Photoshop icon, so I'm looking down here at the dock. Okay, there it is, Photoshop icon open. It's opening the image. Now, I don't want to work on this image. This is the JPEG off the internet, right? This is, it's, you know, right? If I go to image and image size, it's not 8 by 10. This is going to be a totally different image. What I want to do, I'll go back here, I could delete this out of here, is... I want to be able to bring this image into the other document. So I can go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Horizontal. I can see these side by side or Two Up Vertical, either one. So I can see these top and bottom side by side. I'm going to zoom out on this so you can kind of see it. And I'll zoom out on this so you can kind of see it. And now I can take this with my Move tool up here in the top right corner and I can drag this. So simply I'm just taking it, click it drag it from there to there. Now, it seems weird that this is an extra step, but we're gonna be doing it a lot anyway with our subsequent images. So now I have it in here and I can align it the way I want. I can close this image up. So if you're a way to get your images off the internet is to put them on the desktop or in documents, great. Remember, drag it to the Photoshop icon like this to open it up as a separate image. If you drag it directly into Photoshop and open Photoshop document, it becomes what's called a smart object. And we don't want to do that yet uh, in our class. We'll talk about smart objects later in the semester. We're not going to be doing that quite yet. All right, now I've got my base image. And again, I can move it around, line it up. If I want to uh, transform it and get the, its size more properly, I could do that. Command T is transform. And let's say my image is a little smaller or it was really big when I brought it in. I could bring it down, grab a corner, bring it in and make it small. I want to fill up the whole space. This looks pretty good. I don't want to cut off those lights up there too much. It's not going to be a perfect fit, but it'll be close. So see how I have no white of my canvas showing up. Command Z, I can zoom in. All right, excuse me, Command Plus, I can zoom in. Command Z is undo. I'm going to hit the check mark after I've done that transform to apply the transform. So I'm going to hit this check mark. I can also hit Enter or Return on my keyboard. Now, this is in my untitled document, which I'm going to save as Cubism. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I don't want to start working without a saved file. So I'm going to save this just to my desktop for right now. I'm going to call it Cubism. And you could call it Demo just if you want to follow along. And this isn't maybe your final, obviously, you're going to want to use some other images probably for your final project. But I'm going to call it Cubism Demo. You call it whatever you want. It's a Photoshop format document. This is our master document that we edit in. If we were going to be outputting this, we'd maybe output it as a JPEG, right? A flattened image. This is a Photoshop document. So that's our layered document with uh, that we can go back and edit again later. So layers checked. Okay, click Save. Click OK. There it is on my desktop right there. You can see it kind of show up right there. Awesome. Now, let me go back to the internet, grab Chrome open again. Let me find another couple images here. I'm going to do kind of the same thing that we were just doing. So here's a pretty good image at night um, right here. If I click this one, it's going to show up over here. I can click View Image in Chrome. There it is. I can drag this right into this document, but I'm not going to do that. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to take this to the desktop and drag it right to my desktop. Okay, let it go. Then I'm going to take it and drag it and open up in Photoshop. Trust me on this process. I've got two tabs open. I've got my Cubism demo open and I've got this new Dodger Stadium photo open. I'm going to go to Window, go to Arrange. This time I'm going to go two up vertical so they're side by side. I'm going to make this one a little smaller. So I'm going to click on my, my, my PSD file, my Cubism, and Command minus, zoom out a little bit so I can see both these. Now, I want to take some parts from this image and put them in this image. This is how we're going to create our Cubist document. So I'm going to go over to our toolbar and I'm going to go to Polygonal Lasso Tool. Okay, so if I click on that, what's great is this is 
Polygonal Lasso Tool helps me create geometric selections. So I'm not gonna get too detailed here, but I'm just gonna kinda click once, somewhere in here, click, 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 and then kind of go back to where I started. And you'll see it gives me these marching ants. The marching ants means I have a selection. Now I gotta switch tools, go to the Move tool, take this now you can see the move tool has a little uh scissors there as a symbol it's saying hey do you want to cut that part out of this image well we don't want to cut it out of the image but we want to take it and bring it over to the image on the right so when i take and drag it looks like i'm cutting it out but you'll see it won't when i'm done i'm going to click and drag and let go there it is it didn't cut it out of this image because i brought it into a new image if i was just clicking and moving it watch this if i don't click it and bring it to this image look what happens then it does cut it out, right? See, I didn't take it over to the one over on the right. I'm gonna Command Z undo that one. So now I've got this one over here and I wanna line it up. Well, clearly it's way smaller than the other one. So I'm gonna Command T, it's got its own new layer here. Look at layer two. And if I grab a corner, I can kind of get this pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect and get it kind of close. This is great, like look at the infield dirt, it's totally different color. Outfield wall is different. I'm going to line up my mountains back there in the light. I'm cool with it being a little smaller. It's kind of going to make be fun. And then click the check mark. There's my first multiple angle, multiple point of view, different time. So I've got a whole different year. This is probably a different decade at Dodger Stadium, right? All right. So let me, I'll take another one out of this image and then I can open up another image. So I'm going to click over here. I don't want these marching ants anymore, so I could do Command D and deselect those marching ants. I'm gonna go back to my polygonal lasso tool, and then I'll, maybe I'll take like, uh, maybe I'll take like uh, a little small chunk down here, just a different drawing, and I'm just kind of drawing with this thing, all right? The polygonal tool connecting back up to the start. You have to kind of go all the way around and make a connection at the end. So you start in one place, make you click and make points, and meet meet back at the start where you started. Now I have to switch tools. This is the key. I cannot drag with this. I could move it. It'll move it around for me right now. That's just going to move my selection. But I want to to actually move it off of here and over into my other one on the right. I got to go to my move tool, and then click and drag and let go there it is now what do i do to make this bigger command t transform it's only transforming that object on that layer and then i can go and grab this make it bigger kind of try to line up home plate maybe try to line up the infield a little bit i'm gonna make it a little bigger here and look it's kind of cool if it's not perfect that makes cubism a little bit more visually interesting i think so i've got something going like that Pretty cool. So I would keep, you know, continue to do this now with other images. So I'm gonna close this one down. Don't really need that one, don't save. Here's my, my working file. I'm gonna go back to Chrome. That's just the browser I use. I'm gonna go back to Chrome here. Uh, close this one down. Go back and look for another Dodger Stadium thing. Okay, how about like slightly different angle just to make it kind of, I don't wanna go turn the stadium completely around, but maybe a slightly different angle like this one. So I go here, go to view image or hold down control or right click and view the image, right? But it's kind of nice if you just, if you can go view image and then I'll take this again. I don't want to drag this directly into Photoshop. I could, but look, I've got the whole image in there and I only want a chunk out of it. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to take it, drag it to my desktop. You can delete them off your desktop later. Drag it to my desktop. There it is minimize Chrome here. Then I'm gonna take this from the desktop, drag it to my Photoshop icon so it'll open it up as a separate document right here. So when I drag it down there, it's gonna open it up as a second separate document. There we go. There it is. I wanna to go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. Now I've got them side by side. What do I do? I go over here to the polygonal lasso tool. Now look, I could not use the polygonal. I could use the regular lasso tool and make some kind of curve shapes. It doesn't all have to be geometric, you know, rectangles, you know, that kind of thing. So I could kind of uh, just do a free form shape like this if I wanted to. That's up to you. Then I'll go to the move tool. Take this from there to there. And about the right side and you know it needs to be a little bit bigger but 
something like that and I can kind of put that on there. I can also change the layer order here, right? So if I go over to my layer stack, see how if I move layer four down, see how it kind of like is underneath that one a little bit? So I could change the layer order there and that's moving the layers down. I could hide it between both these two if I wanted to or I could move it back to the top. So your layer order really matters here. It's gonna be how we visually see these. You don't wanna take your bottom layer and move it up to the top because then you won't see any of these other you know, parts right here. So I'm gonna move that back down to the bottom. So that's how we would create a cubist piece. You're gonna pick uh, you know, something in Southern California that maybe is meaningful to you. Dodger Stadium is meaningful to me. Uh, maybe you'd pick like Universal City Walk or something or the pier in Santa Monica or Venice. Uh, or Griffith Park, or Capitol Records, or Amoeba Records, or whatever. You're gonna pick a place. Life in Southern California is our theme through the lens of the art movement cubism. That's what we're going for, right? You can also do this on people. So let's say you decided to take you know, a picture of a friend or pictures of your friend. You would wanna take multiple photos of that person from different angles. Or let's say you wanna take your own photos. You say you want to go down to the down to Venice. Take, find a spot in Venice and take photos from multiple vantage points of that same place, and then bring all those into Photoshop and put them together from all those different vantage points. The real key is if you're using your own photos, try to find different times of day or take pictures different times of day. You know, high angle, low angle, side side. That's going to replicate more closely a cubist painting. So that's what we're going for. Certainly for this project, you can use images off the internet. Uh, that's fine, right? If you wanna take your own pictures, that's great too. All right, so hopefully this tutorial helped you out on cubism in Photoshop using the polygonal selection tools, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.